Hello and welcome you all. Dear students, this is a quick revision session for unit number two of the subject radiation and microwave theory. So, dear students, today's topic is transmission lines and waveguides. We will quickly brush up the things related to this topic. In regular videos, we have studied what are microwaves, what are its advantages and what are the applications. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this, define microwaves and list its advantages and disadvantages. We know that microwaves are the signal having the frequency, are the EM waves having the frequency range 1 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. Advantages includes due to such a high frequency range, we can say microwaves are having broad bandwidth so highly directive micro beam can be generated then micro signals can easily interact with crystals then micro signals uh, are used for duplex data transmission and so on its applications include so micro ovens we know that it is very commonly used in domestic application for cooking purposes then in biomedicals micro radiometers are used these radiometers are used to detect the exact uh, cancer growth of a tissue. Then microwaves are used in satellite communication, then in television signals and so on. Next important part is waveguides. To cause the transmission of energy, microwaves are used. That means microwaves are getting transferred from one point to the another point. So to cause this transmission, certain metallic structures are used. That means hollow metallic tube is used. This is called a waveguide. As the name indicates, through this hollow metallic tube, micro signals are transmitting. So this tube, this structure guides the signal passing through it. So it is called waveguide. There are two types of waveguides. One is rectangular, another is circular. Very simple, if the shape is rectangular, it is rectangular waveguide. If it is circular, it is a circular waveguide. This is the incident wave. Incident wave strikes on one of the boundaries. These are the two plates. Incident wave strikes on one of the boundaries, gets reflected. Again, it strikes to the upper boundary, again gets reflected and so on. Due to this back and forth reflection, micro signals gets transmitted through this structure. This is the diagram related to rectangular waveguide. Now, there are two important terms. One is TE, that is transverse electric uh, mode. So, as the name indicates, if electric field intensity is transverse to the Z direction, this is the Z direction, direction of propagation of a wave. So, if electric field is transverse to Z direction, it is called TE, transverse means perpendicular. It is called TE mode. If magnetic field is transverse to Z axis, Z direction, then it is called a TM mode, that is transverse magnetic mode. One more mode is there, that is TEM mode, which is transverse electromagnetic mode. Next part is waveguide parameters. From the exam point of view, few definitions may be asked related to this waveguide parameters. So first waveguide parameter is guide wavelength. Notation is lambda g. Definition is the distance traveled by the wave to produce a phase shift of 2 pi radians. Formula is lambda g is 2 pi upon beta, where beta, this term, is the phase shift. Next is the phase velocity. It is also called velocity of propagation. It is the rate at which wave changes its phase. Formula is Vp is equal to omega upon beta. Omega is angular frequency. Next is the group velocity. It is the velocity with which the propagation of energy takes place. So it is VGR, which is D by D beta of omega. Beta is the phase shift. Characteristics impedance, eta or Z0, it is the ratio of electric field to the magnetic field intensity. And for the free space, the value of characteristics impedance is 377 ohm or 120 pi. Next, an important part is comparison between waveguide and coaxial cable. So this chart shows the comparative analysis of both these things. So for a waveguide, it is acting as a high pass filter that is HPF. So as the name indicates, it passes only frequencies above certain threshold level. Coaxial cable acts as an all pass filter. Then transverse electromagnetic mode does not exist in waveguide. In case of coaxial cable, it exists. Waveguides are used for higher transmission of power. This coaxial cable is used for lower uh, transmission power. Then ideally there are no power losses in waveguide, whereas there is a significant amount of power loss in coaxial cable. 
then conductors are not required in waveguide whereas in case of coaxial cable copper conductors usually are used then energy propagation in waveguide takes place with the help of TA transverse electric or transverse magnetic TM uh, waves while in coaxial cable the energy propagation is with respect to transverse electromagnetic mode so this is comparison between waveguide and coaxial cable next part is waveguide parameters first we'll discuss the concept of dominant mode the mode the uh, as per as far as the definition is concerned the mode which is having highest cutoff wavelength or lowest cutoff frequency is called a dominant mode now this diagram shows variations of fields as far as this electric and magnetic fields are concerned these vertical lines shows variations in electric field while these dotted lines horizontal lines shows variations in magnetic field the variations of electric field is from zero to maximum and again from maximum to zero this variation is called one half variation now remember the notations the transverse electric mode is denoted by temn and transverse magnetic mode is denoted by tm mode what is the mode basically whenever uh, em that is electromagnetic waves start traveling through the waveguide number of different patterns are generated these patterns are called modes so there are two uh, basic modes one is transverse electric and another is transverse magnetic the generalized notations are temn or tm M N base M N M small m represents number of variations. Similarly, N also represents number of half wave variations of electric and magnetic field respectively. So, if we are talking about a dominant mode, then uh, as far as this electric field is concerned, we discuss variation is from zero to maximum and again maximum to zero. This is one half variation and it is denoted by M is equal to one. While in this case, whenever we are talking about this type of vertical variation, there are no variations uh, for magnetic field, so it is denoted by n is equal to zero. So dominant mode in case of rectangular waveguide is P E one zero mode. Now the dimensions for this dominant mode are A is equal to two B. This is the generalized diagram where uh, in which I have shown A is denoted. I mean A represents breadth of a waveguide. Uh, d small d represents length of a waveguide and width of a waveguide is denoted by b so we will discuss mathematical equations related to parameters of a waveguide so first is cutoff wave number notation is kc formula is square root of kx square plus ky square where kx is m pi by a ky is n pi by b a is the breadth of waveguide b is the width of waveguide now <clears throat> Another equation for KC is omega C under root of mu epsilon. If it is asked to uh, define and uh, write the mathematical equation of these parameters for the dominant mode, then we have discussed that TE10 mode is a dominant mode in rectangular waveguide and this suffix is 10, it indicates m is equal to 1, n is equal to 0. So before that, this is the basic formula, put KX and KY in this equation, you will get this equation. Now, for dominant mode, m is 1 and n is 0. If you put m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 0, by putting n is equal to 0, this second term vanishes. So, finally, you will get Kc is pi by a. Next is cutoff frequency. Basic formula is 1 by 2 pi square root L, uh, mu c. Mu is permeability, epsilon is permittivity. Square root of kx square plus ky square. Again, same logic. Put value of kx and ky, you will get this equation. Now, you can well uh, further simplify it by taking pi term common but up to this step also this equation is okay for dominant mode put m is equal to 1 n is equal to 0 so if you put m is equal to 1 in this equation and n is equal to 0 finally you will get this formula uh, for the uh, cutoff frequency of a dominant mode so it is square root of 1 by a square that means square root and this square term gets cancelled so it is 1 by a then Propagation constant formula notation is beta g omega square root of b epsilon into square root of 1 minus fc upon f where fc is the cutoff frequency. Next is the cutoff wavelength lambda c to ab upon square root of m square b square plus n square b square. Again same logic for dominant mode put m is equal to 1 n 0 that means this term vanishes. 
so if you are putting m is equals to 1 so it is square root of 1 b square again it will remain only b p and b gets cancelled so it is 2 a so these are the formulae related to waveguide parameters now as far as the numerical part is concerned the numericals are very easy you just have to memorize the list of formulae so uh, first formula is cutoff frequency before that there are two types of uh, modes one is TM mode that is transverse magnetic mode another is T mode that is transverse electric mode in case of T mode the dominant mode is TE10 mode the generalized notation is TEMN T to the base small m small n this m and n are half cycle variations so dominant mode is for, uh, for transverse electric it is TE10 mode that means m is equals to 1, n is equals to 0. Whereas for TM mode, it is TM11 mode. On the same lines, we can say m is equals to 1, n is equals to 1. Now, first formula is cutoff frequency. This is the generalized formula. So, it is denoted by FC 1 by 2 square root of mu epsilon. If it is a free space, if the given medium is free space, then we know that mu is same as mu 0, which is 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 and epsilon is same as epsilon 0 which is 8.854 into 10 raised to minus 12. M and N just now I explained these are half variations then A and B small a and B are the dimensions of the given rectangular wave but if it is a dominant mode make it simple if it is T mode then in place of M I will have to put value 1 in place of N value will be 0 remaining things will be as it is and we know that the speed of light in the free space is 1 upon square root of uh, mu epsilon rather 1 by square root of mu 0 epsilon 0. So this is the simplified formula for T10 mode FC C by 2A or 1 by 2 square root of mu epsilon uh, 1 by A. Next is the phase velocity. This is the formula to calculate the phase velocity. It is also called uh, velocity of propagation. So C upon square root of uh, 1 minus Fc by F bracket square. This Fc is cutoff frequency. F is the operating frequency. Then guide wavelength and as usual C is the speed of light. Guide wavelength lambda G is lambda upon square root of 1 minus Fc by F bracket square. This value lambda is the wavelength which is C by F. C is the speed of light, which is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second upon F. F is the operating frequency. Next is the group velocity. This is the corresponding formula. C that is speed of light square root of 1 minus uh, 1 upon 1 minus Fc by F bracket square. And for T10 mode, cutoff wavelength that is lambda C. Lambda C is the cutoff wavelength, which is equal to 2 times A. As I said, A and B denotes the dimensions of a rectangular wavegun. So if you just simply if you just remember this list of the formulae, you will be in a position to attempt any numerical related to TE or TM modes. Now let us talk about important part comparison between TE modes and TM modes. As the name indicates, T is transverse electric mode, TM is transverse magnetic mode. So first point of comparison, it is transverse electric. This is transverse magnetic mode. Second point, in case of TE modes, EZ is zero. So the transmission of energy takes place with the help of HZ. Similarly, for TE modes, HZ is zero. So transmission of energy takes place with the help of EZ. These, these things, EZ and HZ, represents components of electric and magnetic field along Z direction. Then dominant mode in T is T one zero mode. In case of T M, it is T M one one mode. Next F C that is cutoff frequency. This notation F C stands for cutoff frequency. Cutoff frequency of dominant mode is less than T M one one mode. Whereas in this case, cutoff frequency of dominant mode is greater than T one zero mode. Then T zero one and T one zero modes exist. While in case of T M. TM01 and TM10 modes do not exist. Then cutoff wavelength lambda c for the dominant mode is given by 2a. Whereas the formula to calculate cutoff frequency in case of a dominant mode is 2ab upon square root of a square plus b square. 
Next part is strip lines. It is similar to the coaxial cable. <clears throat> this is the structural details. This diagram shows structural details of a strip line. It consists of a thin strip conductor. There are two ground planes, top ground plane and bottom ground plane. This height is H. The strip conductor is placed above the structure and its width is W. T represents the thickness. This structure is symmetric. When the structure is asymmetric, it is called micro strip line. And in case of micro strip line, there is no uh, top ground plane. This top ground plane is absent and this bottom ground plane is connected to the ground. Then in that case, it is called micro strip line. This is the field configuration. Here the E bar that is electric field intensity is shown by the uh, black ink and H bar lines. These are round this conductor. They, these are shown by the red ink. Now di different types of strip conductors are double conductor strip lines, then offset strip lines and suspended strip lines. Its applications includes realization of different microwave components, almost all microwave components, then for high speed digital circuits and in case of wireless communication and radar systems. The last part of this unit is cavity resonator. Cavity resonator is a volume having any arbitrary shape. The different types of cavity resonators are rectangular, cylindrical and re-entrant cavity resonator. Now in this case of cavity resonator, both the electric and magnetic fields are enclosed inside the cavity and they decides equivalent inductance and capacitance. Then about re-entrant cavity, aim is to reduce the effect of inductor and capacitor. L is inductor, C is capacitor and to obtain F0. This F0 is the resonant frequency. In this case, in case of re-entrant cavity resonators, the metallic boundaries extend in the interior of a cavity to support infinity F0 that is infinity number of resonant frequencies at the high frequency suppose we have multiple turns inductor this part and multiplet capacitor then it is reduced by using a single inductor this curved line indicates inductor and by using a single capacitor as you further go on increasing the uh, frequency then two inductors are shown uh, two inductors are used it will reduce the effect of inductors and the gap between the plates of capacitor is increased to reduce the capacitance. If there are much more turns of inductor, then the structure will look like a hollow toroid structure. Now these are the different shapes used to design the cavity resonators. Its advantages are inductor and capacitors are reduced. This downward arrow indicates reduction. Radiation loss is reduced and bandwidth is increased. Upward arrow indicates bandwidth is increasing. Applications include it is used in tuned circuits, then UHF, that is ultra high frequency tubes, then klystron amplifiers, uh, cavity magnetrons and radar systems. So, dear students, that's it for this quick revision session. So, thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.